Okay, in my previous video, I had said that I was going to remove that dash bezel. I don't think I said bezel. But, uh, yeah. The other one was pretty dark. Off my heater controls, I pulled the decals off already, so it has the lighter wood. I'm getting this ready for the other one. The other one still needs to be cleaned up, and there's a pop ribbit that had come off, so i got to repair that. I already knew that ahead of time. But I'll show you the difference between the two so you get some kind of an idea here. Here's the difference. The bottom one's the one that was in the car that I put in there, and I didn't like it for different reasons. But one of the really big reasons is, I don't know if you can see this, but this is all lifting. It's all bubbling. It's, it's just not a nice wood grain insert that you can buy um also this is the original one out of the car like i said someone had put a defogger switch in it which i'm just going to leave it in there because i like the lighter wood and i do need to clean this up and i have a ribbit here that broke i need to re-ribbit that paint that get that fixed up but the difference in these this is an early model one as you can see the two lights and wiper switch are separate they're not together the other one is they make it all one together also you can see this one has indentations this is the old style it's indented where the newer style is just flat so there's no indentations or anything in it it's not that way also, if you look at the uh, bezels that go around the gauges, you can see how these are from the newer style. Really thick, big. The originals, very small. These are actually raised up, as you can see, where these are not. They're just flat. There is no raise on that. These will be need to be painted and glued back in, so I will get that taken care of. Yeah, I wanted to show you the difference in those and why I'm going back to the lighter wood. Uh, I would have liked to have kept the darker wood. It wouldn't have really bothered me as much. If it wasn't for this damn decal that glues on here, it just, I don't know if you can see all the bubbles and stuff in it. And it really, really looks awful in the car. You know, it's, it's just too many bubbles. Stuff. But that's why I'm changing it out. I'll get this one cleaned up. And get it installed and i'll be back to show you that in a little while oh one other thing i had mentioned that this has some kind of a leak in it still right here that i'm still getting an antifreeze leak or something oh, let's go this way but i can see it way down there at that housing and gasket, I can see wet. So that thermostat housing is not sealing. So what I'm gonna do is order a new thermostat housing. This one could be warped or even have pitting in it. I know it has some pitting, but I didn't think it was that bad. And I'm gonna have to replace that. So I'm gonna order a new housing and gasket. Try to take care of that water leak. It seems to be a really stubborn water leak that just doesn't wanna cooperate with me. But that's the way that goes. I did get my paint touch-ups all done. So that's basically out of the way, finished. So all I gotta do is get this dash bezel figured out, get it back in the car, get the uh, shaker scoop back on the car because I'm done with the choke. But I really have to get the housing first and this should be good to go. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, got my lighter wood dash bezel in. I like that a lot better. I like the lighter wood. Even with the switch, I don't care. Definitely like it. All right. Since that's buttoned up, now I'm going to run into town and order a thermostat housing 
a new gasket and start taking care of that problem. Okay, I went ahead and ordered my uh, new water neck for my um, Firebird, as you can see, part number. This is just from my local parts store. I'm hoping it uh, looks nicer than the one that's probably on the car, but we won't know until I pull it off there. But, yeah, there it is. It's a little, you see some machine marks in it, but they are smooth. It is, it, it is smooth. There's no pitting there. So all I gotta do is get this painted up. Even came with the gasket. It's a mighty big gasket, but wow, that's a huge gasket. It does cover. So uh, I'll get the old one pulled off, and first I'll get this one painted up, get it ready to go, and uh, hopefully that'll fix that little water leak down there. Uh, we'll see in a little bit. All right, got the new thermostat on there. May not be the prettiest thing, but hopefully that's sealed now. We'll let this dry for a little bit. I'll put the hose back on it. I'll wipe down some of the water I see and some of the other stuff. Get this cleaned up. So, awesome. Well, here's the old one. It really doesn't look that bad. I'm not sure if it's warped or not but since I have that new one on there I'm just gonna throw this one out could probably have been straightened out if it is warped but it was leaking there so yep that's the old one so it's going bye bye well I got that all back together major fail I do mean fail I don't know if I waited or did not wait long enough for that, that RTV to dry. It poured water out. And what did I do? Hey, I put it back together and decided I was going to go for a ride. And this is what I got before I really got out of here. Antifreeze trail. Antifreeze. Luckily, I didn't go out of the driveway. I just almost made it out the door. And I checked it, and I was like, oh, my God. It was just pouring out the back of that new thermostat housing. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. It wasn't the hose, obviously. It must not be the water neck problem. I don't see no crack in the back back air. So I'm going to go get some more gaskets. I think I'm not going to use any RTV silicone. I think I'm just going to put the gasket on there and tighten it down. And I'm going to see how that goes. I'm going to buy two gaskets just in case that doesn't work. The bolts tighten down tight, so I know the threads are not stripped. They're not loosening up on that intake. I don't think that intake's warped right there. I wouldn't think so. That's pretty thick, and there's a lot of it there. But... Yeah, I'm going to have to run in and get some more gaskets and uh, waste a little more money. And, of course, I'm going to have to get some antifreeze now and see if I can't take care of this. Uh, <laughs> one more problem that just keeps haunting me. Damn water. Uh, back in a little. Okay, pick up where I left off. What a pain in the ass. Yes, I still had more water running out. I put it back together again with new gaskets. And it's still leaked. Uh, what is going on here? And uh, took it back apart. Thought, well, maybe it just needs some silicone. I thought, wait a minute, I want to know why. So without any gaskets or that, I just put the housing back on with the bolts. And the bolts, the front one's perfect. The back one was actually... I would say a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch too long and was bottoming out and would not let that back seal. So that was my problem. So I went and got a longer bolt because I didn't have any shorter bolts than that. I got a longer bolt and added two washers to it. 
to get them the right length. And that took care of my problem. It actually was not pulling the housing down to the intake tight. And that's why it kept leaking and leaking and leaking. As of right now, it's fixed. I'm gonna let this uh, cure for a little bit. And I have a lot to clean up now. The underneath my hood is soaked. As you can see, my belts, pulleys, everything soaked. So I'm going to have to fix all that, wipe it all down, clean it all. Those belts are going to make a lot of noise. So I'll get this all cleaned up. It's my camera going crazy. I'll get all this water and stuff cleaned up. But for right now, I am done because I am frustrated that that's all that was. That means my other housing was fine. So I will pull that out of the trash and keep it now and just clean it up. And yeah, I learned something. You know, you, I guess you got to pay a little more attention to what you're doing. I mean, wow, a 16th to an eighth of an inch water was just pouring out of the back of that housing. So I'm going to leave off here and probably come out tomorrow or later tonight and start cleaning things up. And man, I hope this is done. The only way I'm going to know is to drive it down the road. I've already picked up a couple gallons of antifreeze. So I'm ready to refill it. And I got to put brackets and stuff back on, but I'm not going to do that until after I start this and let it run for a while and make sure it's not leaking. Uh, hey, if you enjoy my videos, please share, like, subscribe. doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and it helps me out. Uh, one other thing I'm going to talk about is my last video, so I'll be right back. All right, I'm probably a mess. I've got antifreeze all over me. i got antifreeze all over my hands. It's sticky. But I did get that taken care of, I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, my last video, I had mentioned, not actually mentioned, I talked about getting sponsors, you know, uh, people that would help you out. Now, I wasn't talking about free stuff by any means. I was just talking about, you know, maybe a discount for parts, stuff like that. But in doing so, I had one of you uh, send me a personal message, and I appreciate that. And kind of gave me the lowdown on that stuff. And I'm going to tell you, I have decided I really don't want any sponsors anymore. I will buy my own things. I will work at my own pace. Um, that guy that reached out to me, or it could have been a gal. Hey, the name, it really didn't say which one it was. Uh, you had informed me that sponsors expect a lot back from you. They want you to put maybe their decal on your car. They want you to go to car shows and advertise their stuff. Uh, they really push you to make so many videos in a week a month because you know they're giving you free stuff or giving you a hell of a discount so they expect something back in return and I understand that you got you got to get mo your money back something to show that you spent good money on somebody and hope they're on your side but uh, one other thing had come up that sponsors these days really aren't looking for old guys like me that restored old cars they're actually looking for people that are modifying their new cars. You know, your Mustang GTs, your Hellcats, you know, your, heck, I don't know, Hornets that you buy. But yeah, he, th that person informed me that those sponsors want modern. They want today's stuff. You know, that's what they're pushing. That's what they're selling. You know, they want to push the new products on the new cars because there's a bigger audience for the newer cars. You know, there's a bigger audience that are out there, these young kids doing fabulous things with their cars and making hundreds of horsepower more than they came with the factory, where somebody like me is just restoring a stock old car. And there's not a huge, huge following to restore old cars. There's more of a following for redoing new modern stuff. And I never really thought about it until that person reached out to me. And like I said, I appreciate you reaching out and filling me in on the really low down of what sponsors are looking for. So I guess I'm going to give that up. I, I don't want any sponsors 
you know, I just do my own thing, you know, and, and have fun doing what I'm doing. I guess I shouldn't make this like a job because this is a hobby. And if I turn it into a job, I'm going to hate it. So going back to my other video, just forget I ever made it. <laughs> just, I do not want any sponsors. Hey, if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, like, share, and thanks for watching. Later.